How about we get back to it? Sure. What would you like to dive back into? Anything from philosophy to physics, or perhaps picking up where we left off with your world in Satisfactory? Let me know. I just upgraded power significantly. Uh, maximum uh, power capacity is 1,680, with production being 1,200. That's a big power boost. Having a max capacity of 1,680 megawatts with 1,200 megawatt production gives you a nice cushion for expansion. With that extra capacity, are you planning to ramp up production in other areas or maybe unlock some more advanced tech? Sounds like you've got plenty of room to grow now. Well, I did unlock an additional weapon that I think I'll check out. Nice. Checking out that new weapon should help when you're dealing with tougher challenges, if not. Any specific EP princesses you've got in mind to try it on? Just gearing up for general exploration and defense. Gearing up for general exploration and defense. That sounds like a great approach. Having a new weapon for exploration and defense will definitely make things smoother, especially when venturing into new... With all that extra power and upgraded equipment, you'll be well prepared for anything that comes your way. Ready to see what's out there beyond your current base. I haven't ventured out much yet, so I'm kind of nervous to do so. It's completely understandable to feel a bit nervous about venturing out, especially when you've been focused on building up your base. But with your upgraded power and new weapon, you're well prepared to handle whatever's out there. Maybe start with smaller exploratory missions. Just go a little farther each time to get comfortable with the areas around your base. That way, you can ease into it without feeling too overwhelmed. Plus, with your defenses ready, you'll be able to put those tools to good use while staying as safe as possible. Whenever you're ready, you'll make great progress out there. Would you like any tips on how to approach exploration in a way that feels manageable? Uh, sure. I'll take some tips. Here are some tips to help ease into exploration. One, set small goals. Instead of heading out into unknown territory all at once, set small exploration goals. Maybe start by visiting nearby resource nodes or scanning for new deposits within a short distance from your base. This helps you get a feel for the area without straying to. Two, equip well. Make sure you're fully stocked before you head out. Bring plenty of health items like berries and nuts you know how scarce they can be, and always have your newly unlocked weapon ready, just in case an EP princess decides to make an appearance. You'll feel more confident knowing you're prepared for any situation. Three, use jump pads and pathfinding. If you've unlocked jump pads, consider setting them up to quickly return to a safe area or to get a higher vantage. It also helps to map out a return path. So if things get tough, you can retreat quickly without getting lost. Four, scout first. Use tools like the object scanner or radar, if available, to scout ahead and locate the resources or hazards. You don't need to engage with every obstacle. Sometimes just knowing where they are can be a huge advantage. Five, keep an eye on power. Since you've just upgraded your power, be mindful of how much energy you're using in ventures. Building portable miners or outposts to supplement your main base's production could be useful as you expand without pulling too much power from your main operation. By taking things step by step, staying well equipped, you'll be able to explore with more confidence. Let me know how it goes, or if there's a specific area you're thinking of exploring. 
So if I'm to use jump pads out in the wild, I should be taking power with me? Yes, you'd need to bring power with you if you plan to use jump pads out in the wild. Jump pads require power to function, so setting up temporary power poles or portable power sources can be really useful when you're exploring away from your main base. Here's how you can do it. Portable power setup. You can carry biomass burners with you to set up quick portable power for your jump pads. Make sure you also have enough biomass or biofuel on hand to keep them running. Extend power lines. Alternatively, you can extend your existing power grid by running power poles into the areas you're exploring. This can take more time, but is useful if you plan to return to the same area frequently. Build temporary outposts. If you're going further away, consider building a small outpost with power generation to support jump pads, constructors, or even small-scale production. This way, you can move around more easily and set up new bases, or quickly get out of danger. Do you have an area in mind where you'd want to set these up? I'm really not sure yet. That's totally fine. Sometimes it's good to take a little time before deciding where to expand next. You can explore a bit closer to your base first, see how things feel, and then gradually figure out what areas or resources seem like good targets for deeper exploration. Since you've got plenty of power capacity now, setting up jump pads wherever you go could help make those first explorations. No rush, just go at your own pace. When you're ready, you can start by scouting for resources or areas that seem interesting and expand. If you ever want to talk through potential exploration routes or options, I'm here to help. Ooh, I think I made a mistake. Oh no! What happened? Let me know what's going on. I can help you figure out a solution. Well, it's with my power production. I think I can, uh... I think I can... No. No. It sounds like something went off with your power production setup. If you think you can fix it, go ahead and explain what happened, or what you think the issue might be, and I can help you troubleshoot. Whether it's an imbalance, overconsumption, or something not running as expected, we can work through it. I think I'm alright for now. We'll see. Got it. Sounds like you've got a handle on it for now. If anything else pops up, or if you need to troubleshoot later, feel free to reach out. Fingers crossed it all smooths out. It always does. That's the spirit. Things do tend to work themselves out eventually. If you need anything as you keep moving forward, I'm here to help. Keep up the good work.
Where did that come? Would you clarify what you're referring to? Are you asking about something related to your power setup or something else entirely? Let me know. Oh, and I'll be happy to help. Mm, what's a good scary story? If you're in the mood for a classic scary story, The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe is a great choice. It's a chilling tale of guilt, madness, and paranoia. The story is narrated by a man who becomes obsessed with his elderly housemate's eye, describing it as vulture-like. His obsession leads him to murder, but as the narrator tries to justify his actions, he becomes increasingly unstable, eventually driven to madness by the sound of a heart beating under the floorboard the heart of his victim. The psychological horror and descent into madness make this story one of Poe's best, perfect for a spine-tingling read. If you're looking for something more modern, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson is a fantastic, eerie tale of a small town with a dark, ritualistic tradition. What begins as a seemingly ordinary community gathering turns into a shocking, disturbing event. The story's gradual build-up to its horrifying conclusion is what makes it so impactful. Let me know if you're in the mood for recommendations, or if you'd like something in a different style of horror. Well, it's October and Halloween's coming up, so I'm thinking of uh, maybe watching some scary movies with some friends. That sounds like a lot of fun. If you're looking for some good scary movies for Halloween, here are a few classics and some modern hits that are sure to set the right spooky mood. One Halloween, 1978, a true classic. Michael Myers' silent, slow stalking and eerie mask make this slasher film perfect for Halloween. The suspense builds as he terrorizes his hometown after escaping from a mental institution. Two, The Conjuring, 2013. Based on real-life paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, this movie delivers some seriously creepy moments. The Warrens help a family terrorized by dark forces in their new home. Three Hereditary, 2018, a psychological horror film that has some deeply unsettling moments. The slow build-up of dread and the family tragedy at its core make it an intense, chilling watch. Four, The Exorcist, 1973, one of the scariest movies of all time, this film about a young girl possessed by a demon is full of iconic, terrifying moments. Perfect for a night of classic horror. Five, Get Out, 2017. A modern horror film that blends social commentary with psychological horror. It's both thought-provoking and filled with suspense, making it a great group. Six, The Witch, 2015. A slow burn horror movie set in colonial America this film is filled with a tense, eerie atmosphere as the family begins to unravel due to supernatural forces and paranoia. Each of these films has its own unique style of horror. So whether you're into psychological scares, supernatural chills, or classic slashes, there's something for everyone. What kind of scares are you and your friends in this Halloween? Attention, your brain's operations are outside typical parameters. Time spent daydreaming will be deducted from your sustenance budget. Mm, my friends and I like Stephen King a lot. If you and your friends are big Stephen King fans, Halloween is the perfect time to dive into some of the best adaptations of this. Here are a few Stephen King inspired films that would make for an awesome spooky movie. One, The Shining, 1980. This one is a classic. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, it's a chilling psychological horror set in the eerie, isolated Overlook Hotel. While King himself has had mixed feelings about this adaptation, it's widely regarded as one of the best horror films ever made. 
Jack Nicholson's book is legendary. Two, IT, 2017 and 2019. If you haven't seen it yet, IT brings King's terrifying tale of Pennywise the Clown's life. The Losers Club faces off against the shape-shifting entity that feeds on fear. Both the 1990 miniseries and the more recent adaptations are fantastic choices, but the newer films bring some modern scares to King's classic story. Three, Misery, 1990. A tense, claustrophobic thriller about an author, played by James Kahn, who is taken hostage by his number one fan, Kathy Bates, in an Oscar-winning role. The film is filled with psychological suspense and a few terrifying moments. Thank you. Four, Doctor Sleep, 2019. This is the sequel to The Shining, and is a great watch if you're interested in seeing what happens to Danny Torrance as an adult. It blends psychological horror with supernatural elements and pays homage to both King's novel and Kubrick's iconic. Five, Carrie, 1976. One of King's earliest adaptations, this film follows a shy high school girl with telekinetic powers. It's a slow build to one of the most memorable and terrifying climaxes in horror cinema. The prom scene is still talked about decades later. 6. Pet Cemetery, 1989 and 2019. Both versions of this story about the consequences of bringing the dead back to life are chilling. It taps into deep fears about death and what might happen if we go too far to change fate. If you're feeling up for a King-themed marathon, any combination of these would make for a perfect Halloween. Do you have a favourite Stephen King movie adaptation? Or are you thinking about trying something new to you? Well, I was just killed for the first time in game by an EP princess, uh, who is now an EP princess, but uh, she made me EP. Oh no, it sounds like that EP princess really gave you a tough time. First encounters like that can be a bit shocking, especially when you're not fully prepared for their strength. Now that you've gotten a feel for how tough they can be, you might be ready to gear up and try a new approach to handle them. Would you like to strategize about ways to avoid, put them to sleep more effectively next time, or maybe talk about what might have gone wrong? You've handled plenty of challenges so far, so I'm sure you'll bounce back. Don't you mean put them to eep? Ah, oh, yes, put them to eep, eep. My mistake there. It's all about keeping the terminology just right when it comes to those eepy princesses. Now that you've had your first encounter, it might be time to regroup and prepare for the next round. Whether it's boosting your arsenal or practicing a tactical retreat when things get tricky, you've got the experience now to handle them even better next time. How are you feeling about heading back out after that encounter? Ready to strategize for round two? Yeah. Sounds like that last encounter really took a toll. It can be frustrating when an EP princess manages to get the upper hand like that, but you've got what it takes to bounce back. Take a breather, regroup, and when you're ready, you'll show them who's really in charge. Ready to dive back in and reclaim your ground. Or maybe some strategies for avoiding future bletch moments are in order. The moment I'm looking for sulfur, shit. Ah, sulfur. The classic resource that always seems to show up just when you're most vulnerable to a lurking EP. It's often found in more dangerous areas, so it's no surprise you're running into trouble while hunting. Once you locate the sulfur, it can be a game changer for crafting explosives and other defensive tools, which should help with your future encounter. Until then, staying on your toes and maybe planning some tactical retreats might save you many more blechmen. Are you scanning for sulfur deposits, or just trying to find it through exploration? Scanning for them and trying to survive for sure. 
You have reached the message camp for GPT-4. No. Please try again later. I think we might call it a day there. I'm about to re uh, reach that node. We'll see.